Okay, welcome everybody. My name is Jeff Green. I'm the president of the Green Team Home Selling System and I welcome you to the September 2018 Housing Market Update. Let me quick introduce the panel. Karen Gonin from Green Team New Jersey Realty. Welcome Jackie Krasuski from Green Team Home Selling System in Warwick, New York. And our good friend, Michael Giannetto from Residential Home Funding. Uh, the one person you don't see because she's a little under the weather today, but our producer of this housing market update, Melissa Brzezet. Welcome, Melissa. Thanks for being here and putting all this together for us. Um, all right. I'm going to dive right in and we're going to check out some uh, housing market stats here. Um, a lot of interesting things to talk about this month. Things are kind of moving along and shifting a little bit. Um, we're going to start from the national perspective. Uh, you can see total home sales here. In this first chart uh, provided by the NAR, National Association of Realtors. So the dark blue is 2018, the light blue is 2017. So these are kind of year over year numbers and you can see it's a mixed bag. You know, it was about even in January, about even in February. Uh, 18 is a little bit lower in March, a little bit up in April. You know, so it, it's almost a flat year. If I think if you took cumulative, uh, there's almost no increase nationally um, year over year from 17 to 18. So that's interesting. One other thing uh, that the NAR puts out over here to the right is um, foot traffic, you know, uh, an indicator of future sales. And it you know, is showing in this case, it flips. The light blue is 18, the dark blue is 17. Uh, thus far, there's been, you know, an increase in the foot traffic uh, versus last year. So, you know, I, I think we're going to hear in a little bit from Karen and Jackie, who are troops on the ground. Uh, I don't think that there's necessarily any lack of demand from buyers right now, but, you know, numbers are shifting just a little bit. From a pricing perspective, you know, what I've found just, you know, you know, I've been involved uh, full time in this industry now for about 14 years, and I've always been a little bit of an analytic nut watching the numbers. And I can tell you that, you know, price always lags units sold. And right now we're still seeing pretty substantial price increases, despite the fact that units sold is cooling off. Uh, and that's pretty typical. I'd say there's at least a six month lag. Um, you can see existing home prices year over year increases by region, the Northeast increased by the most, uh, followed by the West. So things are still pretty healthy. You know, you can look here in our area, specifically New York and New Jersey, uh, 3.7, 2.3%. I think all of us locally here would agree that, you know, we never really saw still to this point, I mean, you know, save Manhattan and maybe the immediate uh, boroughs outside of, you know, Manhattan. We never saw a huge increase in price back to 2005, 2006 levels. We haven't reached there where other areas of the country are beyond that, beyond the peak back from 2004, 2005, 2006. Um, so let's get a little bit more local here. And this is where it starts to get interesting. Um, you know, for basically the third month in a row, we're either at or below previous year numbers. And you see August here in Orange County, New York is uh, two years back at this point. So that's interesting. Uh, very interesting. And, you know, for those of us who are in the industry, maybe a little bit scary, to be honest with you, um, because <laughs> the last time we saw these charts turned down, it was precipitous. 50% of the marketplace went away in a 24 month period of time. I don't think that's gonna happen this time, but that's what the experience was last time. Now look at average price in Orange County, just completely shot up here in 2018. I think that's fascinating. You know, it, it just kind of stumbled around for years and years and years, and then boom, it just took off in 2018. And wow, what a variance, right? Between uh, August of 18 versus August of 17, massive, massive increase there. Interesting, you'll see in Sussex County, not the same story. In fact, the opposite. Um, average sold to asked ratio, in other words, what are homes selling for versus what they are listed for? Um, still a very strong number. It's showing that uh, prices are aggressive. There's bidding wars, so on and so forth. Uh, days on market is still very low. The lowest uh, that you've seen in the last five years, it means that homes are moving quickly. So despite the fact that we're seeing some signs of cooling, it's still a very hot market. And, you know, the, the number of units sold, whether it's in Sussex or Orange or nationally, are at historic highs. So, I mean, we're still talking about an extremely robust market um, that had to, at some point, cool off, right? It couldn't just, nothing keeps going and going and going. 
so here we are in Sussex County, and you see a similar picture in terms of units sold, right? Uh, kind of a mixed bag for year over year, 18 versus 17, but yes, a tick lower in August of 18 versus 17. Uh, this is what's interesting. I mean, you know, I've, we've been watching the Sussex County. Karen, we're going to talk with you about, you know, your take on this. But man, prices actually did the exact opposite, did the inverse of what we saw in Orange County, where it completely shot up and there was a massive variance. And here we're at, you know, uh, one of the, the lowest years in the last three years. So that's interesting. Um, you know, it's one county, you know, when you're talking in terms of data analytics, you know, you have a relatively small data set, you can see wild swings because the data is not that large, but nonetheless, Sussex County is still a, a vibrant county with a lot of transactions happening. Um, asked to sold ratio, similar to what you're seeing in orange, you know, at or above the 98%, 97.5, somewhere around there. Um, so coming back to national uh, statistics, the actual change in the last 12 months was 6.8%, so a huge increase. CoreLogic Home Price Index is uh, forecasting a 5.1% change in the next 12 months. Now, that doesn't mean that prices are going to decrease. It just means that they're going to increase by a lesser amount, okay? Uh, that prices aren't going to rise as quickly over the next 12 months. And I would, I would have to agree with that because, again, price usually lags what's happening in terms of units sold. And we see a cooling off in units sold. There's no reason why we shouldn't see a cooling off in price as well. But again, um, you know, still a very robust marketplace. Uh, just a couple quick things, I guess, uh, commercial interruption real quick before we hear from the panel. The next housing market update is gonna be October 16th at 2 p.m. So please stay informed. And you can always learn more, stay connected, look at previous ones, watch videos, all sorts of good stuff. Greenteamhq.com slash HMU. And thanks to really, the uh, real estate agent to agent referral app for being our first sponsor of the housing market update. It's a great app. You can check them out at reallyhq.com. All right, so let's uh, get the panel involved here. Karen, I want to start with you because we saw such inverse numbers down in Jersey. What do you think? I mean, what's, what's your take on everything there? Um, I actually wanted to mention one thing. I've noticed that, um, in August, a lot of our transactions have actually been delayed to September. Um, and I think that's the reason that the units are less than, as opposed to us having issues uh, as far as not enough houses or not enough buyers. So that's important to note because things that used to close in 30 days are uh -huh. now closing a little bit longer. Um, and that's the reason that the units sold in August is lower than it was the year before. Um, this year, a lot of my closings that were supposed to happen in October, in, um, in August, actually have moved to September, a much larger number than a year ago. So I think that definitely uh, does contribute to the fact that our units are lower. As far probably, as prices, probably due to all those mortgage bankers, right? Holding files up, not being able to process things. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to you in a second, Mike. You hold on. Go ahead, Karen. Sorry. As far as um, as far as the prices being lower, the banks have released another batch, which are easier to purchase, so and faster because they're looking for investors, they're looking for flippers. Those are usually cash transactions uh, or fix and flips, depending on which mortgage company you go with. And I think that's the reason that our prices have dropped, as opposed to Orange County, where there aren't that many REOs that are being released. Okay. So, it's That's a very good point. So you're seeing, and, and so that everybody knows, Karen is somebody that actually uh, personally invests and flips uh, homes herself and, and deals with a lot of different foreclosures. So she's in tune. And yeah, I can, I can attest to that, that there was far more foreclosure uh, inventory in Sussex versus Orange County. So what you're saying is that the banks released a lot of that inventory recently. Exactly. So they've released it, um, I would say, around the end of July. Okay. The houses that were released just closed in August. And so that's the reason for the price drop, because our usual conventional mortgages and conventional purchases are higher, but there is such a much larger number of REOs that are being purchased at a much lower price point. That's the reason that we're seeing the numbers so much lower than in Orange County. Okay. All right. Those are good thoughts. 
Jackie, do you have any thoughts on kind of where things are headed? I mean, you know, you, Jackie's a person that sends me a lot of good articles all the time and is always trying to keep me in touch with everything that's going on. So what are your, what's your takeaway on everything? I think we're still in a seller's market. Um, the inventory is still really low. I have several buyers I can't find houses for. Mm -hmm. um, I think the other thing is if you're not seeing, if a product comes on, a house comes on right away. I had a list, a listing recently I put on, um, on a Thursday and I had seven offers in my inbox by Saturday. Wow. So if it's priced right and it's in good shape, it's going super quickly. So obviously you can only accept one offer. So those other six buyers now are left scrambling, trying to find something else to purchase. Yeah. The other side is people that maybe want to move, say they want to downsize, but they want to rent or they don't want to purchase right now. And there's no rentals to put them in, especially if they need a certain school district or an area. So mm -hmm. both sides of the market are lagging. There's no rentals in Warwick. Mm -hmm. per se. Um, and I have someone who was looking actually through Middletown, Warwick, Florida, Greenwood Lake, whatever. Very hard to find a rental for this person. Yeah. Several people actually. So it's still, it's still kind of at that where it's still a seller's market. Um, yeah. Not enough inventory. And I think a lot of people who refied maybe 2011, 2012 when rates were super low, mm. don't want to sell and then purchase something at a higher interest rate now. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's definitely a factor. We were talking about that in, uh, before we got live here on the webinar. I think that's a good point. You, you mentioned that you had a listing that had six offers. We actually, um, it's funny, you know, I, I hear a little bit about every deal that's happening in both offices. And I think recently we had, we had a listing that had 26 offers on it within like mm -hmm. three or four days recently. Yep. So, you know, it's hard to talk about a market cooling off when you have these types of things going on. Right. Um, but you know, you, you want to look ahead, right? You want to look around the corner and see what's mm -hmm. coming. And I do think that, you know, from a transactions, the number of homes being sold on a national, local and regional level, I do think that we've kind of seen the highs from this, this last run up. Yes. And what I'm, what I'm hoping for is, is a soft landing, you know, not a <laughs> precipitous decline. And well, Mike, and I think you always see a decline now this time of year anyway, especially anybody who wants to move that has children in a school district. Yeah. We'll sort of wait and then start again in the spring for the following year. No, there, there's definitely seasonal fluctuations, but you're seeing year over year decreases. Yeah. Period, same, you know, same period versus one another. So that, that's why, you know, it's, look, we've seen very steady units sold increases for four close to five years in a row. And we're finally, for the first time, not seeing big increases. So, you know, no matter how anyone wants to spin it, whether they want to say, well, well, you know, there's no inventory or this, that, the other thing, the market does seem to be cooling just a little bit, you know, or at least there's a lid on it somehow. Um, so, Mike, um, to me, what ultimately the major factor of the precipitous decline where we lost 50% of the marketplace in a two year time span, which is really remarkable, um, was because there was such a financial mess, you know, both uh, mostly created by mortgage backed securities. I don't think we see that going on right now, do we? I mean, do we see a lot of subprime lending happening? Do we see the mistakes of the past creeping in here? Well, look, back then you had product elimination that went on over uh, about a, a year and a half period that took the market from somebody fogging a mirror to not giving any money at all. Right. <laughs> so it was, it was really uh, prohibitive to these buyers that were trying to get out there that were less than perfect. Um, now we have some safeguards and regulation, whether good or bad, that is, is saving the, the, um, the downside a little bit. Uh, you definitely have more of a, a rise of what they call non-QM products that have Come into the marketplace in the last year or so where they'll do all different types of products now uh there's none of the really uh no doc crazy crazy products but there are bank statement programs there are self-employed programs that allow for people to do asset depletion uh pledging of assets so there's things that are out there that people can still buy um i think that it allows for a lot more people in this marketplace 
that we have a shortage of, of this inventory, but we still have availability of credit and, and funding. So I, I don't think it's uh, related there because there's plenty, people are lending, the money's out there and people are getting the financing. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. So in other words, really what, you know, what was, what made it such a nasty downturn the last time around was not only did we have our financial crisis, but the end result of that was a, was a real tightening of credit throughout the marketplace and made it really hard to make it, make a comeback. So hence the reason why just it was so not, they, they, the pendulum swung so far to the other side, right? That they didn't want to lend to, to anyone through that crisis. Right. Right. Okay. So that's good news. Now let's talk about rates. What's going on with rates? Where do you think they're headed? You know, give us a little bit of an update there. We've had in the last few weeks, we've had a little bit of an uptick in those rates. I definitely think we're going to see a little more until after this cooling off and some of the economic information, we spoke about it before. The economic information is, is definitely signal, signaling uh, the downside a little bit. Uh -huh. So I, I think that we could be in for some lower rates, I think, come next year. Wow, uh, that's good news. I think we have a tick up a little bit before the end of the year. Okay. What is, what is it currently at now, roughly 30 year fixed? You're at mid to high fours, you know, depending on product, depending on scores. Yeah. Still a tremendous rate. Yeah, it's great. No. It's cheap money. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, even as even as close as, you know, 15 years ago, I was, you know, I had a six and a half percent mortgage for my first home, you know. I have um, to tell you, in the mid 80s, when my parents moved, my father's interest rate was 13.5 percent. Oh, there's stories of 18, 20 <laughs> percent. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, people you know. People will buy no matter what the rates are. People will purchase homes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's just what are what are the homeowners going to get for that home with with rates being ten percent, which which is not going to happen, you know. Right. So we're still in the neighborhood of four and a half percent for a thirty year fixed. That's a very affordable rate. Um, Mike's saying that rates could stabilize or come down next year. That's really good news. Um, just some other you know overall economic factors. The unemployment rate is near an eighteen year low as of August two thousand eighteen. Mm. Um, wages increased 10 cents on average in August, 77 cents year to date. Uh, I don't really know. I'm not a wage guy. I'm not a guy that watches wages all the time, but none, nonetheless, it's an increase, not a decrease. And here's another interesting one. The construction, construction sector added 23,000 jobs in August. I think that's a good thing. I think that what's happening is builders are ramping up. Um, you know, it's hard to blame the builders. They got crushed. I mean, there's mm -hmm. so many people that got crushed through this last downturn everywhere from, you know, plumbers, excavators, framers, sheet rockers, general contractors. Um, you know, it's not, it's not, <laughs> I can't blame them for being hesitant to make the comeback. Um, but I do think, you know, I see things happening locally in our marketplace and the fact that they're continuing to add jobs is a good thing. You know, that's how I look at it. They were one of the largest sector increases in terms of jobs added. So, all right, good stuff. Um, I think that's it. You know, uh, it's a good update. I, I say we keep chugging along, right? I mean, I guess my takeaway is if you need to buy or sell a home, it's not necessarily a terrible time to do it. It just is what it is. You got to do it, get it done. The rates historically are very low. So, even if you have to buy right now and you get a four and a half percent 30 year fix, I mean, you're really not doing bad, right? Is that fair to say? Absolutely. It's, like I said, it's cheap money. People, we can get financing for just about anybody today. And, you know, they have purchasing power and it's a great time. Great. Now, Mike, how do people get a hold of you if they want to, if they're interested in learning more about getting a mortgage? They can certainly call my office at 845 496 0836. Or visit my website at rhfunding.com forward slash Michael Giannetto. Okay, very good. And uh, of course, everyone can find Jackie and or Karen at our website, greenteamhq.com. You can call either the Warwick or the Vernon office to talk with them. You'll get connected that way. All right, everybody. I think we're done. Uh, unless we've had any questions, I don't see any outstanding questions from any of our participants on the webinar. So we're going to sign off and say thanks to everybody and uh, leave it at that. We'll see you next month uh, in October. Take care. Thanks, Jeff. Bye.